Hello, I'm Parker Dunbar. Today we'll be reviewing several introductory procedures relating to the use of the ECE labs. The first thing we'll go over is the policies and procedures handout provided for each lab. To open the lab, the TA needs to go to the stock room and turn in his or her cat card to receive a TA parts box. At that time, the lab will also be opened. Please note that there should always be more than one person in the lab. This means the TA should not be alone in the lab at any time. The TA must remain in the lab for the entire duration that students are in the lab. Students will check out parts from the stockroom in the same manner that the TA does. They can turn in their CAT card to receive a parts box. An ECE parts checkout list is provided in each of the laboratories. This list is in a three ring binder and is usually kept on a desk or a workspace near the door. Additionally, parts checkout forms are also kept in the same area. Within the ECE parts list, you'll find the ECE part number, the device description and name, and the cost per part. The checkout form is fairly simple to fill out and can be filled out by a TA or by a student. The TA can check out the parts for the entire lab or students can check out parts on an individual basis. The fields on the part checkout form are fairly straightforward. You simply need your name, date, the ECE part number, which you can find easily in the parts list, and the quantity of the parts you need. Once you've filled out your checkout form, take the checkout form to the stock room and exchange the form for the parts you require. Return the parts at the end of the lab. Upon entering the lab, all personnel should put on safety goggles, or safety glasses as the case may be. Provided for each and every student and instructor are Z87 plus rated safety glasses. Additional safety glasses are located by the door. In the event that you choose to wear prescription eye protection instead of the safety glasses, that is considered an acceptable countermeasure. The final form we'll be going over is the fire exit procedure. This is located on the back of policy and procedure forms in some paperwork or on a separate page for others. In the event of a fire, proceed outside the building. Use the stairwells and not the elevators in order to exit the building. Remain 50 feet from the building perimeter and stay on the south or west sides of the building. In the event that there is a mobility impaired person in the lab or office that you're working in, please escort the mobility impaired person to one of the areas of safe refuge located within your building. In the ECE building, these areas of safe refuge are the stairwells. Give the mobility impaired person a cell phone and make sure to tell the incident commander or UAPD officer that the mobility impaired person is in one of the areas of safe refuge as soon as you've exited the building. Wait for the all clear to be given by an incident commander from the fire department or a police officer before re-entering the building. Just because the alarm goes off, don't assume that the building is clear. That's all we have for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something. Thanks.